Hello, my name is Chris Pascal and I'm Director of the Centre for Research in Early Childhood. I'd like to share with you uh, in this short session um, a very brief introduction to the new revised Early Years Foundation Stage Framework and to place before you some issues that I think it might be quite useful for you and your teams of uh, uh, fellow colleagues to have a think about and to have a conversation about. So I'm going to share my screen now and uh, hopefully you can see that and I'll start the session. So a short briefing about the Early Years Foundation stage revisions and developments and um, the idea is to provoke some critical reflections. I put that on um, a large screen and I'm hoping you can see that. So to provide some quick context uh, to the, revi the revisions, um, they haven't come uh, without a surprise. They've been a number of years in the making and many of us in the sector, although we've really enjoyed and, and worked really well with the, uh, the, the previous framework, we did feel that it was time to make some revisions and after a series of consultations and dialogue, uh, the department now has uh, reformed it and revised it. Um, and very clearly they state that the aim of the reforms is to strengthen the early years curriculum um, assessment practice uh, around uh, that curriculum uh, and to, to really think through how much and what kinds of assessments we need to do and to inform and develop professional practice. Uh, and the intentions of the revisions uh, are laudable. They're to improve outcomes at age five, particularly around early language and literacy, which we know is, is vital for young children's further progress. And alongside that, there was a sense that uh, practitioners uh, needed their workload reduced. Um, there was a sense that, that there were the previous framework and, and assessment practices had generated a lot of what they saw as unnecessary paperwork. And so they wanted to address that and give some clear signals about reducing that in order to free practitioners up to spend more time with the children. So two laudable claims. They, uh, they claim that the Department for Education claim that the, the revisions promote a holistic curriculum, but a curriculum that puts early language development at the heart, which shows their um, intentions for that. Uh, and and the, the value that they're placing on that element of that curriculum. And they want to streamline the assessment processes through, and they've done that through making revisions to the Early Years Foundation Stage profile, um, which comes into place in the final uh, stage of, of the Foundation Stage in reception classes. They want to remove the statutory requirement for local authority moderation. Um, and they want to, to, to so really giving the me message that that assessment process is a tool for the end of the phase and shouldn't be used before that. It, the intention is to support children's transitions into the national curriculum and year one of key stage one. Um, there's a new requirement to promote good oral health and then some other small amendments on safety and welfare. Um, just to provide clarity. So the intentions uh, are very clearly stated in the documentation. These new revisions um, have, are coming in uh, from September 2021, that, the new academic year, and all schools and early years providers must now, from September, follow the new framework. And uh, it, guidance is really suggesting that, uh, uh, that the sector ought to be making plans. They're very conscious of the pressures of this last year with the COVID pandemic. So they're, they're, they're not expecting everything to be in place for September, but they're saying that the set settings should have prepared and should have a plan. Um, and that means taking time fairly urgently to read the foundation stage framework, the new revised development matters, and I'm suggesting the birth of five matters uh, guidance to lots of really good guidance. Um, which is helpful. I'll come on to that uh, very quickly in a little while. And there's quite, quite a wealth of other resources, advice and support that have been promoted both by central government, the department, by your local authority and 
uh, various professional organisations, including Early Education and the Early Years Foundation Stage Coalition. Uh, but a lot of other professional associations, such as the Preschool Learning Alliance, um, the Early Years Alliance, um, that will also have material to help to. So in very quickly to summarise, um, the first lot of changes are some changes to the educational programmes, which are the areas of learning and development, which um, frame, which provide the framework for learning and development in these first years of life. Um, and you can see that there's more focus across the board on communication and language, but the seven existing areas of learning and development, three prime and four specific, have not been changed, they remain the same. So communication and language, physical development and personal social emotional development being the prime, uh, but communication and language weaving its way much more explicitly um, through all those seven areas. And the educational programmes provide summaries of the kinds of activities as guidance, they're not required, but guidance exemplification of the kinds of activities that teachers and practitioners can carry out with children from birth through to reception in each of those seven areas of learning. Um, some of those have been um, uh, slightly modified, slightly changed, as I say, particularly to, to put some emphasis on communication and language. But the idea is um, they're shorter uh, in all and, and more open to encourage practitioners to decide themselves the approach, the pedagogic approach to the curriculum that's right for them and how activities and experience of the children should be shaped. So autonomy given to practitioners and that to me seems a good thing. But there is exemplification and, and clear messages about the importance of communication and language. Um, the profile at the end of phase, of phase, the assessment tool at the end of reception is shorter, about two thirds of the length. And again, to allow more freedom to develop the right kind of curriculum that you talk with. And I keep emphasizing the pedagogic approach that you use, that gives you autonomy. But I'll pick up later about the role of play in that. Um, so you can think through uh, what kind of approach you're gonna take play-based, adult directed in some cases, adult framed, um, and, and, and the balance of that or the hybridity of that within your practice. Um, rather than the, uh, the, the, the quite long list of age bands, there's now just three broader age bands suggested. Um, and again, more room for you making a professional judgment about where you think a child's learning and progress has happened and where they sit across those three broad age bands. And, and to, to, to encourage you to, uh, to, to move away from tracking and documenting and providing evidence of every little step on the way for the child. So use your own judgments based on your knowledge and experience of the child um, uh, in those, those three age bands. There are 17 early learning goals and uh, reception teachers only are required to assess each child against those goals. But again, a slight change, the, the, uh, the, um, the assessment of a child being, uh, being uh, exceeding those goals, that judgment is gone. You just need to say, are they on track? Are they, are they reaching the expected goals or are those goals and is that development still emerging? Um, other changes to assessment and moderation is the, the progress check at age two hasn't been changed at all, it remains the same. Um, the reception baseline assessment um, is still there and there's some information on, on the, the baseline assessment on entry to reception and the profile is still there and statutory. Um, uh, but the, the statutory duty of local authorities to moderate it has, has now been removed and the guidance says that, that schools, and city, schools, which is largely where these reception children are, may wish to moderate internally and with, with partner schools to ensure consistency of judgments, but that's up to you to make those arrangements. Um, the data from the EYFSB still has to be submitted to their local authority and the data, they'll have to forward that to the department. So implications. Well, clearly you need to decide your 
design your curriculum and the pedagogic approach around these new educational programs from September. So the programs are what shapes the curriculum, not the early learning goals, very clear about the role of the ERGs are just an end of phase assessment for reception class teachers and everybody else um, should be designing their curriculum around the programs. Um, clearly with these new changes, it's helpful that all your staff and parents are aware of the changes and are implementing those changes in their actions. And it might be good to see what other support is around to support you in developing your plan and then over the next 12 months implementing that, that plan. And there's some really good guidance from the department and the YFS coalition. Uh, there's support materials to support your action. Some important documents, um, the new foundation stage framework, it's published, it's there, it's downloadable and everybody should have that and be using it. And then two really good um, uh, 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 published uh, guidance documents. Uh, the DFE one is Development Matters, that's had some minor changes to it um, fairly recently, but it, it's there and, and it's recommended that everybody's aware of that. It's shorter than the original development matters, but it does give this overall view of how children develop. And, and, and again, there's guidance linked to that's been, um, been um, developed. And again, it's very clear. It says it's intended to guide, but not replace. Use your professional judgment. The birth to five matters guidance developed by the Early Years Foundation Stage Coalition. Um, again, another really great and, and more detailed and more holistic and wider based uh, set of guidance and support materials through their website um, that's de been developed by the coalition working with the sector as a whole. So those two support documents, really, really important to, to get your head around those and, and to have a look at those and guide as you roll, as things roll out to, to, to use that to, to help that thinking and those dialogues that are going on. So some, some issues that I think might be helpful for you as you start to talk with your, your, your team and colleagues about it, um, that th these, this, is, this is a personal reflection of, of things that are uh, exercising my mind and my dialogues around these new revisions. Um, a, a really important one is, is, is not the curriculum itself, it's the pedagogy to support the teaching and learning that supports the implementation of that. Uh, and, and in the new revisions and the new documentations, in order to make more room for, um, uh, for professional uh, judgment and, uh, and autonomy, uh, they're, not, they're, not, they're much less explicitly telling you what pedagogic approach to use. It's suggesting that you might develop that and talk about that yourselves. And there's some good things in that, but the, the other consequence of that is the status of play in that whole foundation stage document uh, is less vi visible and less emphasized. Um, I would argue, I couldn't argue strong, more strongly that I think play is essential to children's well-being and learning. It's an essential pedagogic strategy and tool. It's at the heart of really good early years practice. The evidence is really clearly there. So, so we, we must be really careful about making sure that the place of play in our pedagogic approach is, is centre stage um, and, and we don't uh, get uh, uh, pressures to, to uh, replace it with more formal adult didactic, adult led didactic um, uh, directive sessions. That, that you keep that balance in your pedagogy and that play has, has the, 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 the status and, and, and the power to do the job it's always there to do, which is, is to really support children's well-being and learning very well. Um, I, I'd like to think you'd have a really good um, conversation ar around communication language and how we do embed excellent practice and support for that throughout uh, our programs um, you know and and the role that literacy uh, plays uh, and how those two aspects of learning remember one is a prime and one is a specific subject but how they work together um, the documentation uh, and the revisions has a primary focus on phonics uh, 
uh, and I think that's worthy of, of debate. In mathematics, uh, I, I think it's, it's interesting that um, the, the area of shape, space and measure has been removed as an ELG. Um, it's, it's very much there and it has to be uh, part of the framework, but uh, removing it from the ELG, it, it, it gives a, a certain kind of signal. Uh, and to me, I, I wonder about why that was done, given the fact how important that is for all STEM subjects, particularly, and not just um, numeracy and, uh, and mathematics, it goes much wider than that. So that's something to think about and, and to make sure that that aspect of mathematical learning is still there. Similarly, technology has been removed from the ERG. So again, put, you put that with space, shape, measure and the value of all of that for STEM and uh, our current need to, to, to really understand the technological revolution um, that's going on. Uh, it puzzles me uh, why those, those areas haven't got more profile um, within it and more support for that. Um, you know, they're not that visible, in my opinion. And, you know, how do we make sure that we, we don't lose that from the foundation stage or it isn't diminished in the foundation stage? I think the new ELG around self-regulation, I'm going to link that with the characteristics of effective learning, which many of us wanted to be more visible and, and to have more, uh, uh, more status in the document. Some recent amendments have, have, have made that a little bit more visible. But still, I don't think they're as visible as, as I'd have hoped, despite that real research evidence that this really underpins children's longer term capacity to operate as a successful learner. So have a think and have a talk about that. And, and, and then finally, um, this was a real opportunity. And I think globally, nationally and globally, we're in a situation where um, where it's really important for us to think big and think deep and think globally about some really important issues, such as global sustainability, um, uh, ecological conservation, climate change, citizenship, children's rights, really, really important, radically important issues for us to face. And, and, and to me, I th the revisions could have uh, embraced uh, uh, teaching and, and learning in these future uh, key global issue a, a little bit more explicitly and clearly and um, I think it's a missed opportunity and, and I'm really hoping uh, practitioner teams can make sure those things are not lost but they're they're woven in and very very visible in children's learning experiences um, so that's it those are my issues for reflection that's my quick skate through um, skate through the, um, the foundation stage revisions. I hope it's a helpful briefing and good luck with the changes and enjoy those wonderful children. Thank you.